We are now in episode 39 on page 115 of our Beowulf text. When we left 38, Beowulf had passed and Wiglaf is sitting by his side um, and has recently given him, brought him the treasure that he, uh, that cost his life. And then Wiglaf was left, a young warrior, sadly watching his beloved king. Seeing him stretched on the ground, left guarding a torn and bloody corpse. But Beowulf's killer was dead, too. The coiled dragon cut in half, cold and motionless. Men and their swords had swept it from the earth, left it lying in front of its tower, when its treasure, when it fell crashing to the ground, cut it apart with their hammered blades, driven them deep in its belly. It would never fly through the night, glowing in the dark sky, glorying in its riches, burning and raving. Two warriors had shown it their strength, slain it with their swords. Not many men, no matter how strong, no matter how daring, how bold, had done as well, rushing at its venomous fangs or even quietly entering its tower, intending to steal but finding the treasure's guardian awake, watching and ready to greet them. Beowulf had gotten its gold, bought it with blood. Dragon and king had ended each other's days on earth. So Wiglaf is left alone over Beowulf's body, and we have the retelling of um, the battle between Beowulf and the dragon for a couple of reasons. To bring importance back to the fact that he died courageously. Also, as the storyteller is telling the story of Beowulf, it's to remind those who have maybe just entered or weren't paying attention to the story before as well. And when the battle was over... Beowulf's followers came out of the wood, cowards and traitors, knowing the dragon was dead. Afraid while it spit its fires to fight in their lord's defense, to throw their javelins and spears, they came like shame-faced jackals, their shields in their hands, to the place where the prince lay dead and waited for Wiglaf to speak. So now the Geats, who had abandoned Beowulf in his time of need, are emerging from the wood. And the only reason they're emerging is because they know that the dragon is dead. He was sitting near Beowulf's body, wearily sprinkling water in the dead man's face, trying to stir him. He could not. No one could have kept life in their lord's body or turned aside the lord's will. World and men all move as he orders and always have and always will. Again, on your theme tracker, this is evidence of the theme of religion. Um, from lines 2855 to... 2859, the idea that God is controlling all things. He wills what he does. He determines when individuals die. Then Wiglaf turned and angrily told them what men without courage must hear. Wexton's brave son stared at the traitors, his heart sorrowful, and said what he had to. So Wiglaf is now speaking directly to the Geats who um, were treacherous and who ran away from Beowulf in their time of need. I say what anyone who speaks the truth must say. Your Lord gave you gifts, swords in the armor you stand in now. You sat on the mead hall benches, prince and followers, and he gave you with open hands, helmets and mail shirts, hunted across the world for the best of weapons. War came and you ran like cowards, dropped your swords as soon as the danger was real. Should Beowulf have boasted of your help, rejoiced in your loyal strength? With God's good grace, he helped himself, swung his sword alone, won his own revenge. So Beowulf is scolding them. He's talking about the fact that Beowulf has given them everything that they presently are wearing, has fought for them and rewarded them. And then in the one moment when Beowulf needs them, they run like cowards. This has shaped their identity. On your theme tracker, these individuals are seen as cowards. What's interesting about Wiglaf in this moment is that he doesn't take any credit for helping Beowulf defeat the dragon. That is a mark of a humble person. Someone who is not in it for the glory, not in it for the fame, and still, even after death, respects his leader. The help I gave him was nothing, but all I was able to give I went to him knowing that nothing but Beowulf's strength could save us, and my sword was lucky, found some vital place, and bled the burning flames away. Too few of his warriors remembered to come when our lord faced death alone. And now the giving of swords and golden rings and rich estates is over. 
ended for you and everyone who shares your blood. When the brave Geats hear how you bolted and ran, none of your race will have anything left but their lives, and death would be better for all of them and for you than that kind of life you can lead, branded with disgrace. So Wiglaf ends that speech by talking about how you will never get treasure, you will never be re rewarded again, and not only will you be punished, but everybody in your family will be punished. Okay? Um, he takes away all of their treasures, he takes away all of their titles, and he says, not only will you have nothing and your family will have nothing, you will be disgraced by all. So make sure you take your notes for 39. You fill in your theme trackers. There's many other instances of courage and identity, um, as well as um, good versus evil with the dragon, with the fight for the dragon as well. So make sure you fill all those out before you put everything away.